talk about how to quilt a larger quilt on a true home machine, all right? My name is Holly Ann Knight of String and & Story, and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. And typically, I sew on a big old jukey because this is what I do, right? But I know that many of you sew on a machine a lot like this one, which is what I sewed on for years. This is a Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. It has a standard five and a half inch throat space. And I get asked all the time if I have a small throat space, and small here is code word for standard, how do I get my quilt through that? How do I make that happen? Let's talk about it for a minute. So today I've got a little setup that's maybe a bit like something you might sew on a desk or a dining room table. And now I wanna talk through a little bit of posture. First up, please notice that I have my chair high enough and my table low enough that my arm is close to a 90 degree angle, all right? I'm also sitting up over my sit bones. I'm not slouching back in my chair. Those two things are really important for making sure that you're gonna be able to engage your larger muscle groups like your abs in order to keep yourself steady as you're stitching. All right, now as we get stitching, I've got a Star Island quilt under my needle here. It's not quite a bed size quilt, but it's a hefty little throw. And I'm gonna start honestly with just a little bit of stitch in the ditch as we talk about a few things to keep in mind. As I mentioned, having your arms at an angle that is not like this, right? We want a nice relaxed angle in our arms is absolutely key and one of the hardest things to achieve. After that, I want you to really think about being uh, willing to pause and rearrange often, all right? The smaller your throat space, the more often you're gonna need to tweak your hand position, tweak the position of your quilt, uh, just to make sure that we're not quilting with our hands really far apart, extending too far or anything like that, all right? Next, the arrangement of the quilt itself. I often hear like, oh, should I roll my quilt so I can fit more fabric? I truly just push and shove. Notice how as I'm turning this corner, I just rotated my fabric around and then when I was ready to settle the fabric by the needle, I raise up my presser foot and then I'm ready to go off again. See how my hands are getting far away from my body? I'm gonna stop and bring them back. The biggest difference between quilting on you know, something like a large industrial machine like my Juki and quilting on something like the Singer is that it's gonna take more patience and a little bit more elbow grease. You know, you've got fabric moving through a smaller space. There's gonna be more friction from the side of your machine, but it also is just going to progress a little bit more slowly because it will take more rearrangement as you're going. So get yourself a good audiobook, something good on TV that you can mostly listen to as you're working. And, and know that all the rearranging and fluffing that you're doing for your quilt is part of the process. That's not because um, you know, you're struggling or you're unsure of what you're doing. Everyone who quilts on a home machine like this does lots of rearrangement. Now, if you have the opportunity, to make any changes to your space. In addition to making sure that you kind of raised up your body so you're able to sit up and have your arms at a better angle. The other thing that I want you to consider is making sure you have as much space behind and beside your machine as possible. That's gonna get the weight of the quilt off of your body. So notice that as I'm stitching, I'm roughly in the middle of the quilt right now, so there is still some in my lap, but especially as I work towards the edges of this quilt, I'm gonna make sure that the bulk of it is behind my machine as often as possible. Oop. I'm on a very bulky seam. So let's just move that along together, shall we? There we go. So make use of your table. Um, also having more space back behind you is gonna help it not drag off the edge, right? I could have my quilt draping off right now as we're working. It would probably look a little bit prettier, but gravity is 9.8 meters per second square. That's a lot of pull on your quilt. So let the table do the work. Keep your quilt up, you know, bunched up on itself. Mind where your edges are, but keep it bunched up on itself as much as possible so that it is not pulling and dragging and making it even harder for you to work, all right? 
All that to say, some thoughtfulness about your posture, some thoughtfulness about your setup. None of these are you know, super difficult things to change, but something that you just have to take a moment and go, oh, I didn't know that would help. And a little bit of patience with yourself as you push and shove are gonna make all the difference as you're navigating quilting a larger quilt on a small hole machine. By the way, don't forget to head over to the blog at stringandstory.com for even more tips. Thank <laughs> you.